Uh, greetings, everybody. It's Brian from Witch Doctor here. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, continuing my tuner testing. The initial tests that I did, just to summarize those, because they will be relevant for the next series of testing, uh, was done with this rifle here. Um, I've described it in previous videos, so I won't go into too much depth on the rifle itself, but the tuner was a Dan Bramley tuner, the large diameter tuner that is offered, um, DSB fabrication tuner. And what I ended up doing was uh, consulting with a number of experts, and I've described this in previous videos, but I'll do a quick overview. Uh, in, the, in the field of tuning, people that make tuners have used tuners for decades um, and have tested with them for a <laughs> long, long time. Um, and after consultation, I put together some communalities of, or, or some themes that I was told by the experts and uh, basically took those themes and started conducting my own testing. And what I found with with this rifle here using the Dan Bramley tuner was a particular method that seems to work really well uh, in terms of um, getting the tuner to where you could adjust it to regain tune if your tune falls off. If your groups start growing or your scores start going down because you're missing the 10 ring, whatever it may be, um, how to regain that tune. And I was able to, to actually uh, do the testing in order to find out how to regain tune and, and actually particular tuner settings based on certain atmospherics. But the critical first step in the process was developing a really good load to begin with. That's what I was told by a, a number of people um, who were, you know, again, the experts on tuning. And what that meant was, you know, go ahead and, you know, thread the tuner and turn it all the way in towards the action and begin your load development and make sure you find the right bullet, right powder, right seating depth, um, you have the right barrel, twist, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and, and you're getting consistently small groups. So that was the first step in the process. And uh, this rifle here did that extremely well, extremely quick, uh, more than likely because it's a high quality barrel. It's also, I used really high quality bullets, the Paul Proski or the PRP bullets, the Voodoos in this 30 caliber um, shoot extremely well. And what I ended up doing was my initial load development was pretty clear. I had a pretty good tune window going on uh, in the load development itself and uh, settled on a load pretty quickly. Then what I do is the second part is I not only, you know, kind of figure out the tune in ideal conditions where, you know, the wind isn't going really fast or if it is, it's very consistent and and the bullet should be landing where it should be in accordance to the, the wind intensity and direction, things like that. Um, I then, you know, sort of in initial load development, um, find a good load when conditions are ripe for, you know, finding a really good load. And then I shoot it in match conditions because I want to see, you know, is, is this tune going to hold in match conditions where... I'm going to have a timeline, you know, and I'm going to have to shoot a five shot group or I'm going to have to shoot, you know, a score target. And I can't sit there and wait for relatively ideal conditions. And um, as long as, you know, my holdovers or, um, you know, the wind effects on the bullets are fairly predictable, which in a well-tuned rifle they should be. Um, then I can be assured that the tune is good. So I went out and did shoot this in, in a match, and I scored extremely high in a 300-yard score match, and I also did really well in a 100-200 yard uh, score match, taking first and second um, in in those matches, respectively. So, uh, so the tune was really good. So at that point, after I know, okay, this tune is tried and tested, it's great, um, then I shoot what's called the sine wave test, which I'll explain that in a little bit. Um, after I shoot the sine wave test, then what I do is set the tuner uh, in the middle of what I would call a flat area of the sine wave um, on the sine wave test. Again, I've described this earlier, um, so I'm going to kind of brush over it now. Uh, and then um, from there, shoot the rifle and shoot some groups or scores or what score matches, whatever it may be, in different atmospheric conditions. And it just so happened 
that with the testing with this rifle, I was able to get one particular atmospheric condition change that I was able to test at. Um, and that was with differences in barometric pressure. I was not able to test it in different temperatures or humidities. Both of the testing sessions that I did were in 38 degrees and 42 degrees Fahrenheit temperature and were, were also in 85 and 87 percent humidity. So those variables were pretty much the same. They were what I call constants. They're not something that varied much, but barometric pressure did. I shot uh, several five shot groups in high barometric pressure conditions, um, 30.05, and also low barometric pressure conditions, 29.44. And consistent with some data that I've already accrued on atmospheric conditions that show that where I live in the Pacific Northwest, uh, Washington, United States, um, barometric pressures that get below 29.8, 29.7 or lower in that range um, tend to have the tune fall off when you've tuned in conditions where it's 29.8 or above in barometric pressure. So. That finding I've already found in testing I did years ago, um, continuous testing for, I think I did that test for over a year. So um, anyway, um, when I shot in the high barometric pressure condition, that's when I did um, really good, um, you know, like I mentioned, I had really good load. It was kind of set for high barometric pressure conditions. Um, and then um, I, I went and I shot in low barometric conditions. So. It just so happened that there was a storm that rolled in, you know, a few days later and the barometric pressure was extremely low for out here. And what I actually found was tuner setting one did extremely well in high barometric pressure conditions, better than tuner setting two. And then in low barometric pressure conditions, tuner setting two did better than tuner setting one. So. I was able to literally find out, okay, you know, in high barometric pressure, have it on tuner setting one, in low, have it on two. Um, and if you're, let's say, shooting a match throughout the day and you start in high and then it converts to low, like at noon or whatever it is, um, you can turn it from, you know, one to two and expect that it's going to regain tune. And that's what my testing uh, showed with this rifle. So anyway, so I went ahead and... Um, got a different tuner, different barrel, different chamber job all together um, with this rifle. This is a short range bench rest rifle uh, specifically designed for 100, 200, and 300 yard shooting. Um, the barrel is a Bartland Gain Twist donated to me by, by Bart Souter. Thank you, Bart. And the chambering job was done by Speedy Gonzalez. Thank you, Speedy. And Ed Harris Tuner. Thank you, Ed. Um, I have it topped with a March um, High Master scope, which has, it's a fixed 48 power scope, which has the LR reticle, the Lou Murtica reticle, which is a raised reticle. A raised reticle enables me to um, have the aim point sort of high up on the scope, and then the bottom three quarters of the scope, I'm able to see wind flags. Um, and in the last match I shot with this thing, I was able to see four wind flags out of the scope, which is a lot uh, a typical standard scope i might only be able to see one but with this raised reticle i was able to see four um, a bat nouveau action a bat stock and a flavio trigger that was set to less than an ounce um, so that's this rifle and uh, the testing that i did i'll describe here in a sec okay really quickly i'm going to describe the differences in these two tuners this tuner here, as you can see, is really flush with the crown uh, and it's screwed on and there's a rubber O-ring inside of it that grips the barrel and holds it in place. So you got to turn pretty hard to get this thing to turn. It, it stays locked in place really good with that rubber O-ring. It also has some, some numbers on it to sort of help you index what numbers you know, you're looking at with a tuner. And I put a little mark there on the barrel to help me know where the setting is. In contrast, this Harris tuner is different. Um, it is not flush with the crown. The crown's kind of way in there. Um, it has a, you have to bolt it on. So you have to tighten these screws to clamp it on, loosen them to turn it. It also has rubber. So rubber on metal. Um, 
And so it is a bit of a different uh, tuner. There's no numbers on this one, but it was super easy for me to just go ahead and make markings. The recommendation for this tuner is that you turn it in eighths. So I made markings one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So when I turn the tuner, I, I know what number I'm at uh, with when I'm tuning. Okay, so I followed the same sequence to test the tuner as I did with this Bramley tuner on this rifle. I did initial load development and um, used these Joker bullets. Again, these are PRP bullets, high quality Bentress bullets. I've used these before. These bullets are the ones that are on the short jacket, the 790 jackets. Um, there's others that are made on like 825 jackets, but I chose these because I knew they, they tend to do really well in the game twists, uh, Bartling game twist rifles. And um, I also knew that I can set the bullet at 2000s off the lands and it probably should do really well. And it ended up uh, in initial load development doing really well. My initial load was 30.1 of N133 uh, for my 100 yard load. And then for my 200 yard load was 29.9 of N133. Um, both of those uh, had the bullet seated 2000s off the lands. What I find is that once seating is set in its sweet spot, it's pretty much good to go at any yardage. And uh, you could pretty much use that seating depth um, um, continuously and it usually works pretty good. Sometimes as the lands wear out, you have to sort of seed it out a little bit more and more um, as time goes on to compensate for that. but. Um, typically around two thousandths is a great start and went ahead and did initial load development again found my 100 yard and 200 yard load and again I do load development in fairly ideal conditions I have flags out in the field I make sure I have a little bit of time to do it so I, I wait for lulls and conditions I'm able to sort of cherry pick a little bit you know and um, so what I decided to do again consistent with my method with the Bramley tuner rifle is I took this rifle to a match and I wanted to test it in match conditions where, you know, I, I have time limited. Um, I have to get off all my shots. I have to, you, you know, use good judgment about wind and, and, and all that kind of stuff, possibly do holdovers, um, you know, in all kinds of different techniques. Um, and I did shoot it in a match that had significant wind switches. Um, had very vari variable intensity of wind uh, direction and intensity and so it was definitely a challenging match in terms of wind conditions once in a while there was a lull and we were able you know a lot of shooters were able to get out five rounds in in consistent or fairly ideal conditions but that was pretty rare anyway um the rifle shot really good and i ended up taking first place in that match uh, to show you as an example, this is a 200-yard target. Uh, again, my my load for 100 and 200 was different. 200, it was 29.9. 100 was 30.1. And got a nice screamer here at 200 yards. Um, at 100 yards, on the last day, I wasn't doing as well as I knew I could, and so I did change the load. I went from 30.1 down to 30 and my group shrank considerably at that point. So I knew that that was a good uh, powder adjustment. I knew it wasn't gonna need much of an adjustment and uh, because it was already you know shooting pretty good, but I knew that it wasn't shooting optimally, so I made a slight adjustment. So now I know at 100 yards, 30 grains is, is the best and 29.9 is the best at 200. Um, so anyway, with that established now, now that I've established that I, I have a really good tune, I go out and I shoot my sine wave test, which tells me where I should clamp down this tuner. And shooting that, I had tuner setting five and a half, four, three, two, one, eight, seven, six, five, four. So I was turning it out one eighth uh, of a turn and firing um, three shot groups in each of those. And what I ended up finding was very consistent with the Bramley tuner actually is that sine wave you know it started off sort of you know near the top of the target dot that i was aiming at and the wave went up above the target dot and then it dipped down onto the target dot where it leveled out here hitting the target dot um, and then it went to the left of the target dot and then it went left up 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 so you can see how 
the sine wave started going up, 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 and then it went down and leveled out and then started going up a little bit and it was back on an upswing there. Um, what that told me is that tuner setting two, one, and eight seem to be what I call the flat spot in the sine wave. And my method that I used with the Bramley tuner was to set my tuner in the middle of that uh, flat spot in the sine wave. So that's what I ended up doing. It's set now at setting one, and that's gonna be sort of my benchmark now. And uh, I shot this in 46 degrees, rain, 87% humidity, and 30.05 barometric pressure. So this load now and this setting is set for high barometric pressure. So my current plan now is to go out and shoot several five shot groups in you know high barometric pressure settings, low barometric pressure settings, um, high temperature, low temperature, high humidity, low humidity, and I'm gonna be studying just how this tuner can potentially, and we'll see if it does, help regain tune in various uh, types of atmospheric conditions. Uh, the Bramley tuner was able to demonstrate that uh, with barometric pressure. Um, but again, that testing that I've done thus far with this one um, has been sort of truncated to only testing barometric pressure. I will be shooting this one like this one in higher temperatures um, and lower humidities to see how temperature and humidity can also um, impact tune and whether the tuners can regain tune under different uh, multiple different atmospheric variables and uh, see what we get